this is Camp Purdy and Troy Drury. Uh, businesses already have authentication policies today, so we're going to talk about how businesses can use advanced authentication policies to augment those. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Troy. Thanks, Ken. So what I've drawn out here on the board before we start is uh, some of our advanced authentication types or methods, if you will. Biometrics, cards, one-time passwords, whether it's a, a hard token or whether it's a TOTP, a soft token. Um, challenge response and password. We'll talk about the last column policy in a minute. And these are typical types of users that a business might have. A business could easily have more than this. Most businesses might even have less than this. But we'll, we'll just talk about this setup right now. So, um, Ken, if you have a business, let's say you run a clinic, you run a healthcare clinic, and you have internal users, how might they log on? How do they log on today? Well, today they just go up to a station, they type in their username and password, and okay. get on in. And is that acceptable, or do you want you want to make it stronger because of HIPAA and high tech and such? Well, not only stronger, but it needs to be fast because every time you go from station to station and you have to re-log in, you're slowing down. Okay, so maybe you're going to use a kiosk to do it as well. Yes. To make it fast. Okay. So you already have some policies in place about how users can log in and and what they can use for their passwords, what length, what number of characters, special characters, all that good stuff. Right. So there's already some policies there, but let me show you what you might do for your clinic. Okay. So for your clinic, let's say you have internal users. Now I bet your users at your facility walk in as I do here at NetIQ, and this is how they get in the building. Right. They have a badge. Yep, everyone's got a badge. Excellent. How about if we use that badge for them to log in? Okay. So now they only have to remember a pen. So no more calls to the help desk, I forgot my password. Okay, so there's a card. That's a good, a so good option. So they go in, to, uh, tap their badge, and type in their pin, and they're in. They're in, okay. absolutely. Now we can even make that faster by adding our kiosk component to those workstations, and then the workstation never has to be rebooted. The users just simply change their identity at the workstation level. So we'll use card down here as well. So is that the same policy, or are there any differences between well, those there, two? Well, there may be. Let's talk about that in a minute. Let's go ahead and think about the full scope first, okay. and then we'll talk about that. So are there areas where biometrics are important in a clinic environment? Well, the, the new e-prescribe, right? E-prescribe, exactly, right? So you're going to need some e-prescribe. That wouldn't be for external people. Right. It wouldn't be for mobile or tablet, or might it? Because they might be carrying around a tablet and doing prescriptions on that? I could, I could see a pharmacist with a tablet. Yep. Well, not just a pharmacist, but e-prescribe covers when the physician is writing uh, the prescription yes. as well. Yep. So it could be both of these. So on these two, you might need biometric. Okay. All right, now, what about your external users? How about your physicians? They don't finish up their notes at work. They go home and... They connect through a VPN or maybe, maybe have, not. Don't know. Could be maybe, right. maybe they use a, a VDI scenario or Citrix. A little bit different scenario, right? Because at home, that someone else could be using that device. That's right. So, how are you going to prove that it's them? And they're probably not going to have a card reader at home. No. Nope. They're probably not going to have a biometric reader at home. Correct. So, how about we use one-time password? So they can use their phone, use an app on their phone. Now they can log in. So that's where this would come into play. Okay, so um, we kind of covered most of these because these are the primary types of authentication. No matter what you do to give somebody a good primary way to authenticate, they'll, they need, they'll eventually screw it up. They'll need a backup. They'll need a backup. Plan B. They'll leave their card or their fingers at home. Right. One of the two. <laughs> uh, and so they'll need a plan B, exactly. So um, even if you have these two, chances are you would probably want to leave another method on. Now, it would be your choice whether to say, okay, you forgot these and left them at home. Let me give you a, a password to use. The same old password you used before. Probably a bad choice because if they're using this for six months, eight months, and then they forget their card one day, 
what's the likelihood they're going to know their password? Very low. Right. Okay. So challenge response is a logical fix for those guys. Okay. So now what if you have an external user who is using OTP all the time? Do you give them another option or do you say, I want it to be secure, you have to use your OTP? I think it depends on your business, right? In, in some cases, they're not going to stop their business. They're going to have a plan B. Exactly. Most cases, I think you're right. So again, we'll do challenge response because they won't know their password. You're going to notice a common theme there. So there's not going to be any checks in that password. Um, the mobile and tablet side. What happens when they're not in the office and they're using a tablet? Same thing. Who cares how they're getting there? It's still challenge response. Challenge response is a good backup method for everybody. And the reason why I want a challenge response over password is just because they're probably going to forget the password. And hopefully these challenge and response are something they're going to remember. Challenge response questions are usually something like what high school did you graduate from? What make was the first car you owned? That type of stuff. So they're questions that are very common, not easily socially engineered potentially, but definitely something that a user should be able to remember. Where a password, you force them to go down a, down a password policy where now they can't use the same one every month in a row, they can't use month names, they can't add a one at the end of it. You've made it extensively difficult for them to remember that and especially if they've been using something else for a number of months, they'll never remember. So they'll want to give some thought to the right, the right kind of questions they want to ask. The right kind of questions are very key. Yeah. Very key. Okay, so now you've kind of got this mapped out as to how you might use this. Now the neat thing is, if you were using someone else's solution and you wanted to put all this in play, you'd have to buy a biometric solution from a biometric vendor. You'd have to buy a card solution from a card vendor. You'd have to go buy OTP from a radius vendor. So I'm going to have multiple infrastructures in. Multiple infrastructures that wouldn't necessarily know about each other. Right. And that all will, will make copies of your AD. They're all things you have to care and feed for. One infrastructure satisfies all of this. Our advanced authentication takes care of this whole picture. So with, with NetIQ, you would have just a single infrastructure with a single set of policies. You wouldn't have to go to each different separate place and to, to see where all the policies are. You have one place to go. That's correct. Not only that, but one user license supplies this for all, for any of this for one user. You don't have to buy a user license, a user license, a user license, another one, another one. So it's one user license for all of this. Let's talk about what kind of policies and, and how you might map this to your policies. So this last column, you're going to want to have a, a, you know, a very simple primary, secondary, and backup. And the backup's going to be what? Is, what's the, the backup is going to be the challenge response. Okay. So that's when a user doesn't have their card with them. Right. And this weekend they burnt their hand. So and so the difference between a primary and a secondary is going to be what? Then? Primary is you the most of the time the user is going to find that device or that method available to them. So for internals. I bet you have more people that, that have cards hanging off their belts. Right, okay. Yep. So that's going to be your primary. Biometric might be those few people in ePrescribe. Could be those, those people that have a laptop and use it at their desk anyway. They might have a built-in biometric. So you would say your primary is card, your backup, or your secondary is, uh, is biometrics. And you would do the same thing across each of these. And then, as a security officer, you can very easily fill in the whys behind every one of those. It's an easy path to fulfilling your regulatory requirements and passing that audit. Makes sense. That's really good information, Troy, about authentication policies. Please uh, go to the NIQ website to check out the advanced authentication solution. We also have other videos about advanced authentication and how a NetIQ can solve your problems.